All right, welcome back. Whew, we have made it through a lot of segments of creative technology. And I am sure that I talked extremely quickly through several of the se segments. And I tried to give you just a basic rundown of all of the different technologies. There were so many that I wanted to show you. I hope I gave you a starting point. If we had been in class together, I definitely would have wanted us to have some Chromebooks. So you could have picked one and you could have practiced on it. Um, I hope that you're going to take some time at home. In fact, I know that you are because you're an educator and that's what we do. And so you're going to take some time at home and you're going to practice on these technologies before you have your students use them and you're going to let your students use them and just enjoy all the usage of them. So some of these technologies and these creativity concepts are very easy to do, right? Um, fluency is very easy to do. It's just writing a list. Uh, flexibility is fairly easy to do in that you're looking at something from a different perspective. But how can you incorporate this creativity and technology into your GT classroom and make it so that your GT classroom looks different from a regular pre-AP classroom because that's what a lot of people struggle with is they basically take pre-AP information, smash it into four days, and then let the GT kids have a fifth day in order to do their year-long project. That's not what's meant to happen. So we'd like to start looking at the GT classroom as a, a special classroom where things are done differently. So one of the ways to do this differently is to allow the students to have a lot of inquiry and a lot of learning through this creativity, through these types of creativity. So in order to do that, you need to have some type of project-based learning in your classroom so that the students are learning the concept that you're trying to teach and they're also getting to use these GT skills and this creativity and on top of that they're getting to use this technology. So it sounds like a lot but it's not as much as you might think it is and you have to let go of this notion that the students need you to teach it to them in in this format and then in this and then the notes have to come and the vocabulary has to come that will all come through these projects through this inquiry and if you see that it's not coming then you talk about those specific things that you see that may be missing or you showcase them when you're making your technology on the board and you're showing it to them so you're showcasing the things that they need to learn from the teaks while they're also getting to do this creativity. So I'm gonna show you my screen and I'm gonna show you a few ways that I do this. You saw one earlier where I talked about the ologists and um, went over the erosion and the weathering and deposition. They've learned erosion, weathering and deposition in the fifth grade or they were supposed to. And we go back over it again in the seventh grade. I don't teach it as a concept. I expect the students to go back look through the internet the internet has lots of information and look at what weathering erosion and deposition are okay i gave them like a two minute video of me talking about the things i did like a little skit i'm kind of goofy and they had a two minute video to get what erosion weathering and deposition were to just kind of return on that little light bulb in their heads and then they had to go and look at it from the perspective of these different ologists and how are they using those things because if you can look at it in that depth of how somebody else is using it you can definitely understand it on the basic top level of what they're asking them to understand for erosion deposition and weathering okay so i do that with a lot of these other things i actually require that my students do a project every six weeks so I try to incorporate into this that they have some kind of fluency, flexibility, originality, or elaboration, just depending on what we're doing, all right? Um, and some of these, I've actually modified some of mine for my other teacher cohorts. And so some of these you'll see are um, downsized a little bit, but you can use them in the regular classroom as well. 
One of the things I like to use along with um, creativity is the depth and complexity icons. So with the depth and complexity icons, um, you if you have GT students, you've learned about these. There are different icons. These are some of the ones that I chose. Multiple perspectives is a flexibility concept. So you can use a depth and complexity icon and you can still be doing creativity. So when we talk about natural selection and selective breeding, many scientists have overlapping ideas or information. They often use one concept in their field of science because it relates to what they're doing. A zoologist would use virology to learn about possible animal illnesses. Okay, so I'm trying to get them to think about this. I give them this assignment the six weeks prior to when we're gonna learn the information in class. So that they're doing this inquiry before so that they're front loading themselves with this information. So we take time in class. So we're congruently learning in my class several different things. We're learning the current thing that everybody else in the campus is learning. We're front loading information for the next thing that everybody on campus is going to be learning. We're also learning presentation skills and research skills. So there's a lot of different wheels moving in the classroom, but you would be surprised. The kids can do it. They, they can. Um, so this is something that I have them do, and then I would have them create something out of it, whether it be the Adobe Spark or whether it be um, slides, they can do slides. So again, I made an example for them. So I showed them how they could potentially think about the language of the discipline, okay? Here's some words that we use. Here's some details in a flower because details is a flower. Here's the ethics of what goes on. The big idea that over encompasses it is heredity. Well, then big idea leads to elaboration. Well, okay, elaborate on how heredity has to do with selective breeding and natural selection. So you're elaborating. Multiple perspectives, okay, and unanswered questions. What questions do you have still, all right? So you're doing all of these creative things in one concept. Another one that we do when we get to space is advertisement for a new planet. One of the things the seventh graders have to know is they have to know that proximity to the sun, presence of water, and type of atmosphere are important to, to humans to live on a planet. So they have to make their planet have these things that we would potentially need, and then they're going to be original. They're going to create an original planet and they're going to put that planet out there, whether they make it in Google Drawings or whether they make it on Canva, it doesn't matter how they create it, they're just going to use that creativity and they're going to make that original planet and they're gonna put that out there for me. Um, even when you're doing the thinking hats, you're using creativity. For the thinking hats, um, for the thinking hats, I did natural disasters for my students. Um, and so we talked about just information and facts, no opinion, just facts. This is fluency. You're just rapidly giving off facts. They're just typing in as many facts as they can find and get the white hat is fluency. The red hat is feelings and intuition. So that's not necessarily creativity. The blue hat is thinking about thinking. So that's flexibility, thinking about thinking from a perspective of how do we think about something, like what kind of plan of action, what should we think about, do, you know, do we think about tornadoes just from the perspective of the homes that they tear up, or do we need to think about it from like the farmland that they tear up? Or do we need to think about it like maybe we could use them, use the power from a tornado and make some kind of energy from it? Like this is the thinking about the thinking. 
The yellow hat is about benefits. Again, that's about that flexibility of seeing it a different way. When you say a natural disaster, students, children, they don't think about a benefit of a natural disaster will be flexible. There are benefits. If you look at a tornado, the benefit is that it does tear up that ground. And, and when it does, and it, when it is farm ground, it tears that ground up and it aerates it and it makes it really great and available for next season's crops, right? And then the green hat is actually called creativity. <laughs> this is originality, right? What's an original way to deal with this topic? What's, what's something that we could do that's original? And I've had kids make, um, I had somebody try to make a tornado bracelet for people that were deaf, that couldn't hear the signal that came up. And so there was like a vibration that came up. So they came up with a creative idea. Um, and then this last one is about judgment. Any judgments that you have, that's not necessarily creative, but the creativity mingles in with those six thinking hats. And again, now we're talking about natural disasters, which they totally and completely understand and don't mean, need me to teach them so heavily, right? And they're getting a chance to look at it and be creative with it and think about it from other ways. And it's elaborating on it. It's more in depth than they would get in the, in the regular classroom, okay? I have this for all of the grade levels. I've taught 6th, 7th, and 8th. So again, I have um, six weeks projects. And what I did, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I was completely lazy. <laughs> and I went in and kind of copied um, one of the projects. And then I went and kind of was like, okay, everybody's doing storyboard that everybody's doing, you know, Powtoon. Because last year I taught 6th, 7th, and 8th grade science and 8th grade English language arts. So when I was grading Powtoons, I kind of wanted everybody doing a Powtoon so that I could be looking at those, or at least they were doing a, a Powtoon, Adobe Spark somewhere, Google Slides somewhere in that similar. Um, when, when we did storyboard that, everybody did storyboard that so that I could look at it. So I did kind of cheat a little bit. <laughs> One of the things I did for sixth grade for energy, which um, is a fluency, is they had to do 10 real world examples of energy transformation. So it's just getting them fluid with thinking about energy transformations, right? Because they tend to think about it in only one direction, but you need to think about it from, you know, mechanical to chemical and um, I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, let me show you, actually. I'll show you I made my own project so that they could see it. So again, I'm making this along with them and I'm showing them. What I do is if it's a six week project, I give them four weeks to work on it. And then in the fifth week, I put up my example. So if they're struggling, they still have two weeks to use. So chemical to mechanical, chemical to light, electrical to mechanical, chemical to thermal, radiant to chemical, and they're adding a picture. So they're visually seeing what it is and they're adding a description of what's going on and they're adding what that type of transformation is. So they're getting that fluency in there and they're looking at energy transformations just like we would in the classroom. So again, I have this that I've already made and when it's at the four week mark, I put mine up and I say, okay, mine is up, mine is ready. You can go look at mine if you're stuck. I obviously answer questions as we go along so that they can see what's going on and what they need to do. Let me show you a little bit of eighth grade science just so that you see some of that. And eighth grade science is kind of all over the place. I did um, weather where they did weather and they had to answer these questions. What's the sun's role? How does water move? These were all actually essential questions that they had to use. And then they had to go back and use one of these technologies in order to go back and do that. And then we added in um, also looking at it from another perspective. And so we had that flexibility in there. I do tend to like ologists. I use those a lot. And um, we did um, tectonic plates and ologists. <laughs> and different scientists and then I made them connect it to how chemistry explain how what you learned about chemistry would be important to a real world geochemist so they don't understand they don't necessarily always understand that what I've learned here can connect to what I've learned here 
And now I can elaborate on that and now I can see how these are not standalone, but how I can combine these to create something new. And now I have geochemistry, right? So um, there, there are so many options. There are just boundless and boundless op options of what you can do. My hope is that you will just start in any capacity. Just take this information, put some creativity in the classroom. It's as simple as put it in a warm up, have some, have some fluency. Let's start with fluency, put it in a warm up. Like I said, name as many things as you can think of that starts with cells. Name as many things that you can think of that are powered with electrical energy. Um, I'm trying to think of, name as many uh, different types of natural disasters as you can think of, right? Any kind of fluency. Then when you get comfortable with that, then you can move on and you can do flexibility and have them look at things a different way and have them create things a different way and think about them in another way. You can use the ologists. You can have them go into Google Drawing. You know, you can get a black and white clip art of a tornado or something, put it in there, get something that's your mascot. You know, if you're the bulldogs or something, you just get a little bulldog, black and white, put the little bulldog in there. Maybe he doesn't have any facial features or something. He's just an outline. Put that bulldog in there and maybe they can turn him around and he becomes goodness knows what. And you can just have all kinds of fun and see what it is that they come up with. Um, originality tends to be a little tough, but to have them come up with something original, something new, um, have them just come up with a new planet that's never been, um, a new insect that's never been discovered, um, have them come up with an original way to market something, to advertise something, um, a, an original logo for something. So there's all kinds of things that you can do. And again, with that, you can use Canva in order to do that. And you can put that out there. And then that elaboration piece where they're going beyond what we're learning. They're getting that GT education. They're learning more. They're getting to ask those questions. They're getting that deeper understanding. They're getting those aha moments of, oh my goodness, I didn't know that happened in the real world. Um, so that elaboration piece and then again, just kind of pushing them in through those technologies into that Powtoon um, that tends to be a little more complicated, but has so many fabulous features that they could get used to. And there's a million other technologies that you could use. You could let them take videos and do iMovie, um, and you can do all kinds of things that I know that I've forgotten to even touch on and talk about. Um, but I just wanted to talk about the ones that I was mostly familiar with and the ones that I understood the most. and make sure that I conveyed to you some of the technologies that you can use. Again, my name is Colleen Guzman. It's colleen.guzman at nisd.net. If you have any questions, if you need help, if you want to see any of these activities that I have, um, if you heard me go over something for ELA and I didn't really show it on here, if you want something for social studies and you need a little help, just let me know. I have some things already written up and created. So if you need some help with any of those types of things, I'll be glad to help with that. Uh, the first thing to do is just to try it out. Just get out there and try it out and practice creativity. And I know that's not always easy for some of us because we're not uh, gifted and talented, so we don't think that way. Um, but there are lots of great examples out there. And there's a PDF that I'm gonna make available as well um, that just talks about all creativity in general and the FFOE. And it has a couple of other things for different types of technology. It's kind of a little bit of an older PDF, so the technology is not as up to date. Um, but def definitely just get out there and try things. And I hope you enjoyed this training and I hope you got something from this training uh, aside from just your three hours. <laughs> and I hope you have a really great school year. Thanks so much for watching all of this. Have a good day or night or afternoon or well. <laughs>